Hello everybody, my name is Natale Vinto, I am Developer Advocate at Red Hat on Shift and today I want to talk about CodeReady Workspaces, which is uh, our in-browser IDE for rapid cloud application development. So I want to show you um, that um, CodeReady Workspaces can be used to enable distributed developer teams on the platform uh, in multiple projects in a faster, very faster way. Support many deployment way, uh, support also the disconnect installation and this, uh, and it is uh, OpenShift nav uh, native development uh, uh, tool. Uh, what do we mean for this is that you can have code ready for spaces installed in OpenShift cluster in a very easy way and uh, uh, consumable by your developer team. So let's try it out from an operational perspective, from the ops perspective. We can log in to the cluster as admin, to the OpenShift cluster as a admins, and we can prepare the code ready workspaces installation for our cluster. It's very easy to do in this OpenShift for that file cluster, uh, picking from operator hub marketplace, any operator of our choice that we want, but in this case, we just want to install code ready workspaces code ready workspaces we can just look for code ready workspaces here operator just install it for this demo it has been already installed so um, you can review your installation in your installed operator in this case we just created this operator here and we uh, created also a, a custom resource for the code ready workspaces instance so very easy to install it you just create this custom resource you can drive the custom resource also from the UI or just drive them through the YAML file. So here in the spec side, you decide which kind of authentication you want, the database side, the persistency type and uh, the size of the workspace. Remember those uh, code ready workspaces are just pod inside the Kubernetes OpenShift cluster uh, that are isolated and developers start working uh, from that. So the operator is in charge of installing everything automatically this for you. The result for it is uh, the installation of code ready workspaces. This is the topology view. Uh, if you see, this is the code server with a database, a single sign-on with click lock, plugin registry. When we save the plugin for the um, IDE, and then the dev file. So those are the manifests for describing the workspaces and the operator itself. The only thing you need to do is to give to developer team this URL, this route from the code ready workspaces installation. Um, in this example here, I want to show that how it's easy to enable developer team. So let's let's imagine we want to enable a GitHub organization. In this case, it's the Redwine software. And we want to enable only those people here accessing and working on code ready workspaces in a multi-tenant isolated way. Why? Right? This is really simple in OpenShift because you can take benefit from the OAuth to authentication. Uh, of OpenShift, so you can add as admin easily an uh, uh, authentication provider, uh, identity provider from here. So you just add a GitHub uh, authentication provider in this case, uh, and you can also uh, select which organization you want to use. In our example here, we are using the Redwine software organization. So only this organization is allowed to access the cluster as developers, so we are enabling only those developer team. And this is a really uh, easy to, to do. In fact, uh, as developer, uh, and we can demonstrate this straight away, as developer, we can access the, the cluster, the OpenShift cluster with the GitHub integration. So we just access the cluster here. And um, uh, we can also access uh, the Code Ready Workspaces instance. Uh, so if we go here, um, we access code ready workspaces and we go into the OAuth to authentication here. So we are authenticated uh, automatically thanks to this authentication and we can start coding uh, straight away. So uh, let's pick our favorite uh, programming language here. We can select from, from many of these. Those are the runtime supported by the, the product here that we have. We can pick Java or .NET, C++, uh, Node.js, Python, whatever we like. So for this example, let's start from a Quarkus Java application. When you click here, what happens under the hood is that you are generating a workspace pod that is uh, creating for you all the runtime environment that we need. 
and we can verify this also from the dashboard here from the OpenShift dashboard so as developer user we can also verify that we have something that is happening under the hood in our project that we belong in this case this project has been configured automatically by code ready workspaces so some workspace is some pod is creating here and some storage has been created automatically for us so the code ready workspaces servers server is creating the persistent storage so the persistent volume to save our settings our builds in the workspace and when this finish uh, we will have um, a pod containing all our settings so you can also monitoring this from the developer console in openship this is a, a maven workspace containing a maven um, <clears throat> container where we can start coding and if you go back to the dashboard here you uh, can see this uh, uh, look and feel very similar to visual studio because this is powered by eclipse tia which is uh, uh, the ui engine used by serving the content and start coding in the in browser id of uh, code ready workspaces which upstream project is uh, eclipse share so this is the product around eclipse share up, up, uh, upstream project right so let's start seeing the code here we can start looking at the code uh, we can start exploring uh, the ide here so if you see we have some bunch of container those container are the for instance this is a maven container containing a maven command containing the java compiler the java runtime um, and we have also some uh, uh some uh, welcome intro that explain us how to use the quarkus tool so this is a quarkus application so let's start coding here in this example we have already a rest service with a slash hello path we can use to print something i want to show you that uh, you can pick one of these uh, uh, already available tasks and those tasks are has been configured by the dev file the file is the manifest descriptor for the workspace so we can start uh, uh, testing our application right inside the workspace so we are working only inside the workspace now we are resolving uh, we, are, we are running the maven command to uh, start the application this is defined also we have a pom xml in this case defining all the maven goals and um, what happens is when you start the process and you are in developer mode here in quarkus developer mode you can access this embedded terminal here and you can access your uh, web service this route that you see here is also available uh, outside openshift so this is uh, really nice because when you start coding you can tell the people okay verify uh, this this uh, web service i'm building and, and you are working only inside your workspace remember you are not pushing anything to openshift directly you are implicitly using uh, this workspace on an environment reserved for you by the openshift admins uh, under maybe some quotas some settings some rules okay now let's start code. let's start doing our modification let's say um hello youtubers for instance we do this change here and we don't have to restart anything this is quarks right automatically available our change we don't need to restart anything so we're okay with this um let's start also putting a new content i want to show you uh, that we have also the language server the java language server in this case if you pick another programming uh, uh, language uh, you have the language server for the for for that so we start coding we start saying anything we want to create another sub path on the rest the endpoint here and return like, something like uh, another command hey youtubers so this is a, another path we're picking here um, let's put some annotation so this is a get request and we want to produce if you see this is an autocomplete by the intellisense we can we want to produce in instance uh, a plain text content type uh, and we want also to uh, change a little bit the path so we are integrating this and we want to go to the slash youtube so when you uh, use this on the path there's gonna be an, an annotation of course and you resolve your syntax here you are ready to test everything so we can test here 
as as uh, as you know you can do hello youtube and this is this is your change but also you can do from here which is much better so you can give this url um, to your collaborator and start uh, uh, looking at this uh, in order to try to do other things. So this is our one tire example with a Java application we are using, uh, we are coding locally um, and after this, after we, 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 we code locally, we test it locally, we can also build our application. So we can package the application and we can uh, start providing the jar file, right? Uh, we did some modification here, but we didn't then really touch the, uh, the test. Uh, so we can also test locally, right, before pushing our code. We want to test and we want to ensure that everything is fine before releasing the code. So let's update this, this, uh, um, let's update this test here. We modified uh, the, um, the, the, the string, if you remember from, from the beginning. Uh, let's add this to the to the uh, test so we save it and now we should be fine in uh, releasing our jar file we're packing in the application running the maven command uh, and when the tester are ready we can start uh, having our binary file that can be used maybe it can be used by uh, you know we can push to some artifactory nexus so okay we can start some pipeline so this is uh, our one tower java backend example okay now let's see uh, another uh, workspace let's go to the list here where we tried the one tire java uh, application workspace now we want to try maybe a two tire like a front-end database, this is Node.js MongoDB is a good example. We can start from the this getting started here, uh, but I wanted to show you that you can also do uh, by uh, using uh, the functionality of the dev file. So you can also customize those workspaces here. Um, if in fact, if you go to those chat sample in the GitHub repository. Uh, those, uh, those repo contains all those examples we are looking here and you can also customize that. So what I did is forking one of these um, then I create a uh, dev file for it and I had this button here. This button will create a workspace using a functionality of code ready workspaces which is the fabric, uh, the factory. The factory uh, is able to uh, create your workspace reading a dev file from this git repository so when you click here and it's super nice because you can give to your developer team just this uh, in the readme file just this button click here and it will create uh, automatically the workspace with your customization i uh, wanted to show you how it's made basically it's just uh, uh, you have to put the url of code ready workspaces your code ready workspaces instance factory uh, is the web service used then the parameter is the url of your git repo so when you do the, this uh code ready workspaces will create for you a uh, workspaces reading the dev file so this is the dev file we created for for this purpose and we are saying uh, please uh, download from git from this repository here from this branch and add those plugins and use those container image in this case is a node container image and a mongo container image so we have two container in the same workspace and then we had some commands here so you, your developer on um, team can just uh, test build uh, your application from those commands you can also add the command to deploy the application into openshift or to run uh, for instance a tecton pipeline you can take benefit from the tecton plugin inside code ready workspace if you want to do it but for this example let's have this workspace that we want to uh, code test and then push to into openshift we start from this dev file uh, let's come back to our workspace. So if you remember, we have our Quarkus one already running. Now we generated a Node.js plus MongoDB. When everything is fine with the start of the container, and you can also verify from the topology view, right? So here we have another workspace, so another pod containing, uh, in this case, two containers and a, a couple of routes here we can use to test our application. 
and uh, we can start looking at the code, doing our modification and uh, uh, actively start uh, testing our application. So in this case, in this example, this is a Node.js application, uh, which is a um, guest book consuming a, a MongoDB database. You can very easily verify this. Uh, if you, uh, in the while, the editor is loading things like the IntelliSense for TypeScript in order to suggest the code, as we've seen for the Java part, uh, you, we can explore the terminal. So we can ac access to terminal, the Mongo terminal, so this is the container containing MongoDB and the Node.js one. Uh, you can go here and this is the Node.js uh, container that will uh, run the Node.js application. Those are run tasks that you can uh, run. For instance, we want to resolve the uh, dependencies with NPM. So the first thing we start here is an NPM install. So this will resolve the dependencies and we are ready to uh, start uh, testing our application. So when the content is ready, we can try to start our application. If you remember, if the application open a port, you can have the internal uh, uh, embedded uh, web browser here. And you can, all oh, the nice things is that you can also um, try it out on the web browser and give this URL maybe to some of your collaborators. So you can say, uh, we are, let's use this uh, law from Code Ready Workspaces. So this is a uh, writing inside the Code Ready Workspaces uh, uh, MongoDB database. Uh, you, so you can give this to your collaborator and in order to verify that this is fine, uh, staying in the same workspace. So you are not deploying anything to OpenShift yet. Uh, let's go to the next step. So we want to uh, add our modification. Let's modify, for instance, uh, this test here. We can say hello. YouTubers, uh, my YouTuber guest book. Uh, the modification is very, uh, you can verify the modification straight away. So, so when you do your change, you can verify this with the uh, Git uh, editor. You can verify your, your you can do your diff. And it, if it's fine for you, you can head to the staging area and commit locally. And when everything is good for you, you can also uh, push to um, your um, origin. Um, for instance, uh, here we are pushing it to our uh, repository. You can uh, um, uh, put your credential, uh, but also uh, you can uh, save those credentials if you want to use uh, multiple time for sure. Uh, so now that we are, uh, fi are fine, uh, and we are ready to, so our code is fine, we tested everything locally and this is fine, now we want to push to, into OpenShift. Before pushing to OpenShift, let's verify a little bit the code. So this is a Node.js and MongoDB, so we need a MongoDB uh, to connect with. Uh, this is local to the workspace, but we want some MongoDB on OpenShift, right? So let's verify the code here. We have some connection to MongoDB. What is the MongoDB URI? Uh, URI. You can see the parameter, simple uh, sample uh, username, password, a local host name, which is a service in the Kubernetes OpenShift world. So we can use those uh, <coughs> information to order our MongoDB database. And we want just to focus on the code, right? We don't want to um, prepare any YAML file or or, <clears throat> or make any Kubernetes things. We want just to code. Let's let's try it out. First thing we need to do is to uh, install the OpenShift plugin. So you can do the OpenShift plugin installation from uh, two parts. So that is the plugin list here. Uh, you can see there are lots of plugins available. You can also add your own plugin and it's very easy to add those. Let's say we want the OpenShift one. So we want to install OpenShift plugin. When you install it, you have to restart uh, your workspaces because need to be mounted and uh, refresh in this case the page. You can do by multiple uh, parts. So you can do from that, but if you go here, uh, to the workspace list, for instance, uh, you could also uh, uh, click uh, in the, uh, the workspace. Here you have a view of your workspace, so you can see which project is using. If you remember, this came from our dev file, and, and you can also have the list of plugins. So you can pick your plugin 
from the uh, editor or from the workspace list here. And if you see, we have added our OpenShift connector, we have the TypeScript and the Node.js. If you want to add another one, just click here, uh, push uh, save, and this is gonna be uh, done at the same way that we have done before. So once our workspace is ready, uh, so it has been restarted and everything is fine, uh, you can start um, using the OpenShift connector. So the OpenShift connector, uh, it's also mentioned here in the dev file now. So if we want to report this to our original get repo, if you remember, um, we can also uh, add it here. So we, we will have uh, uh, the OpenShift connector listed, uh, for instance, has been added automatically here. Um, so let's come back to our workspace that now should be ready uh, and we can start using the OpenShift connector. If you see, the workspace is still running. We have uh, the activation of the component, the TypeScript, uh, YAML file. Um, this is a welcome page, it comes from the Redmi, if you remember. Uh, automatically is loading the Redmi on the repository. Uh, our uh, OpenShift connector here is connected to uh, our OpenShift cluster. And this is also the Kubernetes extension, so you can look on the cluster information when loaded. Uh, what you have to do here is log in into the cluster. So uh, automatically this is uh, already logged in into the cluster, but it's using uh, a service account. So we need to uh, log in with our uh, user that we want to use uh, for pushing the, uh, the code. So let's do it straight away. It's very simple. We log in to, into the cluster and uh, we give a token. Where do you get this token? Very simple, you get this token from here. So if you go copy login command top right, pick your favorite uh, uh, login authentication system, display token. So this is in our case, it's our token. Let's copy this one and let's come back to the editor. And now we are logging in into the cluster. So we can see all the project that we have here let's create for this purpose a new project so we want to push our guestbook application in the guestbook app project when you do this of course there is an occurrence in openshift so we created our project now we're fine to push our code remember we are we want just to focus on the code we don't want to uh, write any yaml file we, maybe we don't know uh, about kubernetes we want just to push the code um, as developer, uh, if I don't want to write Kubernetes file or uh, I don't know, somebody in the team didn't for me, I can um, be uh, self proactive and uh, I can use the self service way of order uh, component into OpenShift. For instance, this Node.js application connect to MongoDB. Let's verify what it's, done, what it's doing. Let's surf the code here. So it's connecting to a MongoDB database, which is using a simple user password. And this MongoDB, this is would be in the OpenShift world uh, and the world, Kubernetes world, the service name. So those are the credentials and the information we want to use. We want just to deploy our Node.js application and consume a MongoDB database. Uh, very easy in OpenShift. You can order a database in self-service way from the catalog, no ticket to open, no waiting time. Just click here, the database, use this template. This is a persistent template. So you can put here your favorite, uh, con if you remember the information to connect here, I have already used it before. So those are uh, uh, available from the browser history. So I don't have to type them. Um, and you can create your MongoDB instance. What happens under the hood when you do this? Remember, we are developer, we are just focused on the code. We want just to be proactive and self-service. We are done a database. This has created a MongoDB database on a persistent volume with a persistent volume claim. So there is a dynamic uh, binding service with the storage class that help us creating storage for us. No, the, no need to write the YAML file. We just ordered some storage uh, from the template we were using. When it is fine, when the MongoDB application is fine, then we are ready to uh, consume it through our application. Uh, how to do it? Very simple. We go back to the um, OpenShift plugin connector. Here we can create a new component. So this is a, a connector that uh, 
um, help you creating your application, uh, creating the container automatically from you from the code, thanks to Odo uh, CLI for developer in OpenShift. Uh, so let's decide uh, Guestbook uh, is the name of our application. Uh, you can uh, uh, tell to this plugin, okay, start, create my container application from the Git repository uh, or from uh, a binary file if you create an artifact or from the wall uh, directory structure. So you have just to tell which directory to work. If you remember here, we are in our workspace. We are using this Node.js uh, Node application structure. Um, and let's give a, a name of this. The component name is uh, uh, the component name is the one we, we put. The component type is Node.js. Let's pick the latest and the greatest version for Node.js. Now we are ready to push the, this to, into OpenShift. So when you click here, you're gonna push the code that will be built and merged inside a container inside OpenShift. This is totally transparent to you. This is the audio plugin and you can have the list of your plugin available here if you remember terminals then you go to the plugins uh, this is the VS Code OpenShift plugin connector and and here we have a, an auto which is the OpenShift CLI for developers when you do this uh, your code started merged into a container then our Node.js code and we are ready to consume it nice developer uh, feature inside OpenShift. You can also start the grouping in the application. So if we want to logical connecting this, this is just a UI thing, right? And we can do all these things. So those are logical connected to the guestbook application. Let's go back to the code. Now we want to access our application, of course, how to access it inside OpenShift. The way to access is through an OpenShift route and very simple from the connector new URL. Uh, let's call it guestbook route for instance uh, secure run node for this time uh, remember you have to push your change so you do your auto push you are pushing this into the platform now we have a, an accessible node.js application you can also add this connect which is logically linking the front end to the database it's just a ui thing when you click here uh, here we have our application with our modification. So let's uh, leave another message like uh, here. This is consuming the MongoDB database, which is in on top of shift. No, so not anymore in the workspace, but we are working inside an shift. So we demonstrated that it's easy with already workspaces, just uh, enable team thanks to the um, uh, factory and the dev file customization then we it's very easy to start testing locally and also it's very easy to push inside OpenShift. So no need for knowing, uh, no knowledge of Kubernetes, no need, uh, no particular need for knowledge, advanced things on the upside. What you have to do is just access with your uh, authentication integration, uh, order some uh, database, for instance, push your application from code ready for space, thanks to the OpenShift connector that you have also in other IDI if you want to use it and uh, uh, start testing your thing. So very easy to start coding uh, with OpenShift and code ready workspaces. Uh, so I really recommend you to test it out. Uh, the next step for you uh, in this way uh, would be to uh, download, for instance, code ready containers, which is our um, our mini cube for testing lo things locally and uh, going to learnopenshift.com to discover more OpenShift learning for developers and training. So thank you and uh, see you soon for our next video. Bye.